We all probably know the SpaceX Starship as the rocket that is going to land people on the moon and eventually the planet Mars. That's the real reason that Elon Musk is expending so much money and effort into developing this vehicle. But those flagship missions are far from the only thing that the Starship will be doing. We've already got some very clear signals that SpaceX is intending the Starship to be a workhorse aerospace vehicle that will be handling a very wide range of tasks, from moving stuff to moving people, both in space and even on the Earth as well. So, today we're talking all about the Swiss Army knife of flying machines that will eventually be the Starship. This is the Space Race. Let's start off with the real moneymaker, Starlink. Elon Musk has been pretty straight up that his Starlink internet constellation is the key to actually being able to pay for the Starship development and the missions to Mars. That's why Elon was freaking out last fall and threatening that SpaceX could go bankrupt. He was afraid that there wouldn't be enough Raptor 2 engines to fly Starship and they need Starship to deploy Starlink version 2, and they need Starlink V2 to pay all of the bills that SpaceX is racking up in the process. And we've already seen indications from the ongoing work at Starbase that job number one for Starship will be dispensing Starlinks. So there has been a lot of speculation about how Starship will deploy its payload, because this rocket has an absolutely gigantic cargo fairing, 9 meters across and something like 18 meters high. And Starship also has to be 100% reusable to fulfill its goals. That means it can't just blow the cargo fairing covers out into space like a usual rocket. The fairing needs to have a controlled opening and closing mechanism. That is difficult. Elon has said that the exact logistics of this mechanism is still a matter of much discussion at SpaceX. Initially, we had speculated that Starship would deploy batches of Starlinks in the same way as a Falcon 9, just releasing one giant block of satellites at once. But now it looks like this is not at all what SpaceX has in mind. We've seen from the assembly process of Ship 24 at Starbase that there is going to be a big slot in the stainless steel body that covers the cargo bay. And we're now getting the idea that this slot will be used as a dispenser for the new Starlink version 2 satellites. They'll be rapidly fired out through the slot one at a time. Starlink satellites are long and thin when they first deploy, and then the solar panels extend out as they get ready to make their rise into operating orbit. This makes a ton of sense from a practical standpoint. Now, instead of having to open up a gigantic door to deploy that block, the Starship only needs to open up one little cover over that Starlink slot. The key to making Starlink work at its full potential, which is going to have to be tens of thousands of optical laser linked V2 satellites, is going to be the size and lift capacity of the Starship. As it stands, a Falcon 9 can deploy about 60 of the current generation Starlink satellites, but V2 is going to be bigger and heavier. So that number would drop with Falcon 9, and to reach 30,000 satellites in operation, that's going to take way too many rocket launches to achieve. With Starship, the company believes that they can deploy 400 of the next generation Starlink units with each launch. That's a massive step up in productivity, probably something like 10 times increase over the Falcon 9. This also informs us that there will be multiple variations on the Starship cargo fairing. The slotted Starship is going to do very well for its one job, deploying Starlinks. But the slot is going to be useless for anything else, so there is going to need to be at least one version with a fully opening door. This episode is brought to you by Curiosity Stream a subscription streaming service that offers thousands of documentaries and nonfiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers, including exclusive originals. CuriosityStream is available on many platforms with content about science, space, nature, history, technology, and they're adding new shows every week. It's also extremely affordable, only $1.25 a month. 
If you enjoy watching our videos about space, you'll love the massive library of space content CuriosityStream has to offer at an incredibly low price. One of my favorite shows CuriosityStream has is Engineering the Future, with episodes focused on wind, aviation, fusion, tidal, maritime, and solar. Each episode gives you a deep dive into the companies and people that are engineering the future of technology. We highly recommend you go to curiositystream.com slash space race for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and nonfiction series. And right now, you can use promo code space race to save 25% off, which comes out to only $14.99 a year. So click the link below or go to curiositystream.com slash space race and save 25% off right now. That's only $1.25 a month. And now let's get back to the video. Beyond just being a giant Starlink dispenser, Starship is going to be a workhorse for putting extremely large and heavy things into space. So however the SpaceX engineers eventually go about doing it, there will be a variation of the Starship that is optimized for cargo transport, and it's going to have to have some kind of mechanism to crack open that entire cargo fairing. Just thinking about the possibilities for that giant empty space is pretty mind-bending. The rideshare missions with Starship could be insane. Hundreds of different private small sats going up in one batch, or even being able to rideshare clusters of large satellites in a single launch. This is going to bring down the cost of putting satellites into orbit by orders of magnitude. But what else could Starship put into orbit? Or even beyond that, into deep space. Let's take the Europa Clipper, for example. This is a research spacecraft that will go out to orbit the moon of Jupiter that we believe offers the best chance of supporting liquid water and maybe even extraterrestrial life. Development of the Clipper ship was only able to go forward once a suitable launch vehicle has been developed. At the time, that vehicle was NASA's SLS Super Heavy Lift rocket the same one that will support the Artemis moon missions. So without a super powerful rocket like SLS to actually get it off the ground, there was no point even building the Europa Clipper. The rocket enabled that innovation. Now of course, with the SLS, the whole project fell woefully behind schedule and actually nearly ruined the Europa mission until SpaceX was able to come through with the Falcon Heavy as a substitute launcher. But you get the idea. Big ass rockets set the stage and open up new possibilities to support other big ass spaceships. Or how about space stations? We all know that a new generation of space stations is going to be needed as the ISS quickly approaches the end of its service. The industry is kind of split right now between doing a number of small space stations or one really big one. Blue Origin have the most ambitious plan right now for the Orbital Reef Station. This design features massive core modules that are 6 meters in diameter. There is no existing rocket that could even put these modules into orbit, but Blue Origin are counting on their next generation New Glenn rocket with a 7 meter fairing to handle the job. But Starship can take that up to an even more gigantic 8 meter diameter module. That nearly doubles the size of the current ISS modules, which are 4.2 meters wide. In theory, Starship could deploy an entire, fully functioning mini station in just one launch. To put it all into perspective, Elon Musk has said that Starship will ultimately be capable of delivering 1,000 times more mass to orbit than every other rocket on planet Earth combined. Just trying to fathom that sheer amount of stuff put into space is pretty mind-blowing. We also know that the eventual goal for SpaceX is to have the Starship human-rated for crewed flights. Starship will transport human astronauts as the HLS moon lander at some point in the next few years, but the grand plan is to have this rocket launch from the Earth and then land back here again with people on board. That's a bigger accomplishment than it might seem. The SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule is the first and only American-made spaceship since the shuttle that has actually been approved for human spaceflight to low Earth orbit. 
and it joins only the Russian Soyuz and the Chinese Shenzhou in a very exclusive club of vehicles. So getting the Starship approved to launch human beings will be a major accomplishment. And we know this is what SpaceX ultimately have their sights set on because we recently got word that the company has brought the production of Crew Dragon to an end. Now SpaceX already have four of these vehicles in service, and since they are fully reusable and extremely quick to refurbish, these four Dragons will meet all of the requirements that SpaceX have in regards to transporting NASA crews and private customers into orbit. But this also shows that SpaceX aren't putting any more resources into Dragon than they absolutely have to. If they really saw this vehicle as a long-term project, then they would continue to iterate and improve on it. Instead, we have a strong indication that they are looking to the Starship in the future to take over the purpose that Crew Dragon serves today. The idea of a Starship docking with the ISS to deliver crew is actually pretty hilarious. I really hope we actually get to see that someday because the ship is going to dwarf the station with its sheer size. A crewed version of the Starship will eventually take people to Mars as well. That's the grand plan. And in that case, we know that SpaceX are targeting about 10 to 20 people for that interplanetary journey. Inside the massive space available inside the ship, that should give everyone enough room to stay comfortable for the eight month journey, about 50 square meters of personal space per astronaut. Obviously for a long haul flight between planets, the people on board will need all of the space. But Elon Musk has said that for a short trip, he could fit around 100 passengers into one starship. But where would they go? Well, not necessarily to space. Elon has been pitching Starship as a way to move people and things from one side of the Earth to the other in a very short amount of time. So the idea is that the ship would launch up to a very high altitude from one location, and then it would come back down and land in a very different location. Imagine you launch from a platform off the coast of New York and come back down on a platform outside Shanghai. Elon has said that the noise from these rocket launches and landings will be very intense, so it's only really going to work for coastal cities where they operate a few miles out to sea and away from the population. But it would be a radical change in transportation capability. That trip from New York to Shanghai would probably only take about 45 minutes in the air. Making that trip in an airplane is going to be about 14 hours, just flight time. The military is even eyeing up the Starship as a way to rapidly transport cargo and personnel around the globe. We reported a couple months ago about the US Department of Defense announcing that they would fund demonstration tests of the Starship as a point-to-point -point transportation on the Earth. The cool thing about Starship is that even though its optimal landing location would be into the arms of the Mechazilla launch tower, the ship can use landing legs to touch down on virtually any flat surface, no matter where that might be. This makes the ship infinitely more useful than a cargo airplane. It would also be significantly more capable than a cargo helicopter in terms of lift capacity and speed. So there's a pretty vast range of usefulness for Starship without even needing to go all the way into low Earth orbit. It's no exaggeration to say that this is one of, if not the single most significant vehicle design ever created across all categories of land, air, and sea. And the first flight of the Starship is only months away. It's a great time to be alive. Let us know what use case you are the most excited to see the Starship take on, aside from going to Mars, of course. That's kind of the easy winner there. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.